All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to How to Build High School Success um, with Hoover High School. I'm just going to introduce myself very quickly. My name is Mr. Mercado. I'm the school counseling intern over at Hoover High. And today we're just going to be talking about what is success, how to build success at the high school level, and how you could support your student in doing that, as well as some resources that will help you um, succeed during your time at high school. So we're just going to start off with a quick definition of what is success. For some, success is getting good grades, making the varsity team, getting accepted into a college, but success can look like a variety of different things. It could also just be balancing school and social life, getting involved with someone or with something you love, being happy with uh, your progress in life, and meeting any health or personal goals. So again, success can look very different for everyone and it's up to you to define what success is to you. So before we talk about the future, we just wanna talk a little bit more about the present, right? So eighth grade promotion. So eighth grade promotion is coming up in a couple of weeks and just some things to keep an eye out for is at least a 2.0 GPA in order for you to be promoted from the eighth grade and good attendance. Just check in with your school counselor to make sure you're on track and that you're meeting these two items. Um, so that way you can know if you're ready or if your student is ready for eighth grade promotion. So what actions can you take? So this could be either on the student side or on the parent side, but some things that we recommend um, like in regards to action is to ensure that the student is showing up to class prepared so that the homework is being completed or any readings, prepare your backpack, make sure that the backpack, if their student is starting to go back on campus, that they have all the materials that they need or the materials that the school is providing for them, like their Chromebook or laptop, any notebooks or things like that. Um, something else that just is like something that I thought of was just Make sure your Chromebook is charged or that you have the charger with the student if they are going to campus or even if they're doing online virtual learning. Um, right now, I'm currently back on campus and so many students will forget their chargers or without forget their Chromebook or that their Chromebook is dead. So just ensure that the student has that prepared. Um, and then just keeping your materials organized. It's important to try to keep anything that you have like a backpack, even if you're just using a Chromebook that you have um, all your documents and things Organize for whatever uh, works for you. Um, organization can look like a variety of different ways, just like success. So as long as it works for you, that's what matters, but just try to keep everything, um, again, orderly. And something else that can help is uh, to log on to your class dojo daily. Check it, um, there might be some updates on there, any assignments, things like that. It's really important that this becomes a habit for you as a student, or if you have like a parent access to Class Dojo, that you check it daily as well. Um, at Hoover, we have something called the Sandy Student Portal or the Parent Portal. And we also recommend that students and, teach, and um, parents log on and check it daily. This is a great way for parents to ensure that their students are showing up to class on time, um, that they're performing well. Um, there's also updates on there that um, Hoover teachers add, they'll add like marks, like student did very well in class today, student participated, student showed up with high energy. And it's just a good way to make sure that you're kind of keeping up with what's going on at the school, kind of keeping up with assignments um, and it adds some accountability for also the student. And lastly, attendance. Attendance is super important. Try to show up or have your student show up um, as much as possible. Um, I know right now it's a little bit difficult with virtual learning but attendance is very important to student success. Um, right now, my sister, what she's been doing is every day she'll set up a timer. And once that timer goes off at eight in the morning, that's a sign for my nephew to take out his laptop and log on to his first class. And that's just something that she's been doing to help him get, uh, to make sure that he's showing up to class every day. And you can find little ways and things to do too, to help um, you and your student ensure that attendance is being met um, every day. And obviously things do happen. If a student is not feeling well, um, to feeling sick, if they don't, we don't recommend for them to go to, to class, but you know, just make sure that um, you try to send your student to class so that your student shows up as much as possible. So for now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Hoover High School. So once you promote to eighth grade, Hoover High School is a great option that's not too far away um, from Darnell Charter. So our motto is who ride, 
We're located in City Heights with about 2,100 students and five different academies that students can choose from. This is also our newest building on campus. It's a beautiful, beautiful building. Um, and this is where uh, some of our classrooms are. This is also where our theater is at. So if your student decides to come to Hoover, they'll, be, they'll have a high possibility of having at least a couple of classes in this beautiful building. So again, we're about seven minutes away from Darnell Charter. Um, we're one of the largest high schools within the area. We offer a variety of different uh, school-based and community-based resources to help uh, lead you and your student to success. So I know we just talked about eighth grade and already thinking about high school graduation can feel like a lot, but we just uh, want I just want to give you a quick little breakdown of what high school graduation requirements will look like. It's good to kind of start thinking a little bit about in the future. Um, we look at a little bit more in regards to high school graduation. So we're going to look for that same 2.0 GPA, but we're also going to look for these number of credits in every area. The cool thing about whoever graduate um, who graduation requirements is that they aligned with uh, college um, entry or admissions requirements. So if your student is meeting these requirements, they'll be eligible to apply um, and hopefully get into a four-year university or college um, if that's the route that they choose to take. Here's an example of what one schedule will look like for our ninth graders. Um, so once you start in ninth grade, you'll be asked to choose what academy you would want to enter in. And I'll go over what academies uh, we have in just a bit. But this is for AHHC. So this is for a health academy. Um, so they'll take an elective, usually in some sort of uh, science. They'll take English one and two and a creative writing class. They'll take math one and a power up. So power up is kind of like uh, additional support for their math. They'll help them kind of um, work through their math homework and what they're learning in the math classes. So they're usually paired together. They'll take an elective that's like a language. We offer computer science discoveries or food prep for ninth graders. Um, and then they'll be asked to take a physical education. So they could take PE, a traditional PE class, but we also offer JROTC, which is almost like the high school level of the ROTC program, which is a, a army military based affiliated program um, that your students can participate in if that's like a route that they would be interested in going in. But even if they're not interested in, in like going in that route and they don't wanna take regular PE, they wanna try, try something different, um, JROTC is offered for all students. So here are some resources that are gonna help you succeed during your time at Hoover. And I'm just gonna give you a little bit more information about Hoover as well. So at Hoover, we have five school counselors. There's a school counselor for every different academy that's offered. Um, and this is other contact information. If you would like to schedule an appointment with them for any reason, or you wanna talk about after the presentation, what Hoover has to offer, just more resources, supports, um, you can give them a call on their Google Voice, you could send them an email, or if you have a phone in front of you, you could turn on your camera and just point it at the QR code, and that will take you over to their Kindly um, page. We also have an intervention counselor and a pupil advocate, um, and they both work with helping support the student more and helping them get the resources they need to succeed. So all of these people are great, great resources. They're all amazing school counselors and they're really here to help support not only the students, but the parents as well. So going a little bit more deeper into the academies, we have five different academies, starting with the Academy of Health and Healthier Communities or sometimes called FACES. So FACES for the Future is based off of students who um, wanna go into the medical field or health field the cool thing about this academy is that they offer internships. So they'll send students to different hospitals, different clinics, and help them get more of a hands-on experience and prepare them for what um, a career in the health field and what uh, kind of college and studying in the health field would look like. And then we have the Academy of Literature, Media, and Arts, and that's just called ALMA. And this is dedicated for students who are more interested in visual performing arts, cultivating their skills, and um, just providing a different type of learning experience. Uh, so again, this is more focused on like literature, studying different types of writing, performing, if they're interested in music, 
this would be a great academy to be in. And then we have the Social Justice Academy, and this one is based on creating advocates and organizing uh, students and helping them learn how to promote uh, and advocate for a more equitable community. Um, so they do a lot of social justice work. They even have these things called like a restorative justice center where they learn about how to build relationships instead of doing things like instead of punishing students, how can we build these relationships with students? How can we help them figure out what are better behaviors or changes that they can implement to help them succeed? So it's a little bit different. Um, and I feel like this is one of, I really like this academy. I wish I had this academy in high school uh, or actually all of these, but all of these are gonna provide the students with a unique experience. And they have, I think, until their second semester of their um, ninth grade year to choose which one they would like to go into. And they each come with a variety of different classes they can select from. And then the last two academies that we have is SABE, which is a Sustainable Academy for Building and Engineering. And this is more of like a hands-on type of academy. So they're learning a lot about our sciences, our maths, technologies. At Hoover in the back side of our campus, they have like a whole wood shop building. And students right now are building these wooden sheds as their final projects. Um, within the Sabe uh, Learning Academies. So it's again, really hands-on. It's a great experience for those who wanna go into more of a hands-on career or do something that's relating more to do, working with their hands. Um, and they're integrating a lot of different uh, modern studies. Um, so for fo focusing a lot on uh, improving the environment, going green. Um, and there's a lots of ways again for students to get involved with Sabe. And then the last one we have is the Academy of Information Technology. So this one is gonna be a lot more computer science based. So as right now, like our phones, our smartphones, right? They're powered by all this crazy technology and students will get to learn about some of the technology that's powering our computers, our internet, some of the technology that's getting us through this time of virtual learning. Um, so for anyone who's interested in going into that route, um, AOIT is a great academy for them. And sometimes I just wanted to this out there that the academies will have extra spaces in their uh, electives. So for example, right now we have students in the health academy taking construction tech, which is a SABE elective, but there's extra spaces. So it gives students a great way to kind of learn a little bit more about the different academies while still focusing on their area of study or area of interest. So right now I wanna talk a little bit about wellness and some of the resources we have about uh, regarding wellness. So student wellness and family wellness play a huge part in student success. And Hoover has established some pretty strong resources that support students on campus and virtually as well as their families. So we have a wellness center um, and this center focuses on a variety of different things. They provide a variety of different resources. So students can just go in there to just relax de-stress, listen to some calming music, learn about exercise tips that kind of help their body move in, their blood pumping. Um, if students need resources for food, housing, they need to get connected to a law center for whatever reason, uh, Ms. Octan, she'll provide them with that, uh, with those resources, as well as um, just a safe, not non-judgmental area, somewhere where the students can just feel like they can fight on someone or just need some emotional support. Uh, Miss Danny would be like a great resource and a great place on campus for that. They also do virtual as well. So for anyone who's not on campus or doesn't feel comfortable going to the center, they can always go on virtually and get all those same supports just online. We also have the health center. And right now the health center is doing a lot to support our students and families during the COVID-19 pandemic. They're offering COVID testing, they're doing tracing, they work with La Maestra Clinic to provide free health support services to our students and families around um, the City Heights area. And they have their own virtual office set up as well. So if you need an appointment, if you need to turn in immunization records, if you need to get COVID testing, or even now actually starting on Monday, we'll have a COVID vac vaccination center at Hoover if you wanna sign up for a vaccine, you can go through our health center and they'll be able to get you an appointment. 
Right now, we also have Rady Children's Hospital on campus, and it's just another form of mental support. Um, so they provide mental health services for our families with medical or families that need help applying um, to medical. We have two therapists right now, um, and they're both bilingual as well. So if you need services in Spanish, they can uh, assist you with services in Spanish. If you need some services for your family and not just for your student, they can provide you with that as well. We also have Mending Matters, which are two other therapists that we have on campus, and they provide resources. They do small groups, they do classroom lessons, they'll do one-on-one -on -one therapy. Um, they also have like support groups that they set up uh, virtually. So they have like a men's support group and they meet, I think every Thursday at a certain time. They have a women's support group. They have a stress relief group. Um, so the students can join these groups if you need uh, resources for yourself or for other family members, Mending Matters will be a great place to start with because they connect you to resources outside of Hoover um, and with the community. And then for clubs and sports, um, Hoover has about 50 different clubs and sports that students can join. And by getting involved, they can help them with some important skills that can lead to success like time management, leadership, communication, teamwork, all of these things are so important to be successful. Um, and you can learn them in any kind of club or sport uh, that Hoover has to offer. And then we also have the Hoover Community Connections. So this is an organization that has about 20 other smaller organizations all listed here on the slide. Um, and they all work with Hoover students and families to provide them the supports they need. So like Mending Matters is part of Hoover Community Connections or what we call HCC. We have Aaron Fellows. We have uh, College Avenue Compact, Faces for the Future. We have some free tutoring services in there. So much. There's so many different resources for our students and parents to utilize. Um, and it's okay to rely on these resources, right? It's part of this idea of building uh, success Sometimes we need some additional support to get us to where we wanna go. We need that, um, that help. We need some mental health services. We need a place to study. And all these different resources can provide all those things to help us get to success. And for our parents specifically, we have the PTA. Um, and then we have the PIQE, which is a Parent Institute for Quality Education. And these two organizations kind of meet to help be the voice of parents at our different schools and kind of share different concerns or different resources, different ideas of how we can improve the schools, not only for the students, but for the parents as well. Um, schools don't function as great as they do if they don't have that parent support. Parents play a big part in school success. So it's very important if parents can get involved that they do get involved. Um, and this is again, are some great areas where you can kind of join in and share some concerns or share and connect with other parents and see, oh, this school is doing this or this area is doing this or we're providing this resource. How can we get this resource over at Hoover to support our students and parents? Um, and it's a great way to connect and build that parent network. And then here are some more resources that are focused more on family support. Um, I'm not gonna read all of them off to you, but these are just great for anyone who may need some grieving services, some therapy or, or uh, treatment support. Um, if you need even access to food, we have the Jacobs and Cushman uh, San Diego Food Bank and they are actually at Rolando Park Elementary located in the college area, every Friday providing food to those around the area. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. We really have supports to kind of meet all the different areas in life and not only help the students succeed, but parents succeed as well. So if you wanna learn more about Hoover High, we have a variety of things on our website. Basically everything I covered um, and more is located on our website and you can just click here. And then if you're interested in attending Hoover or having your student choice into Hoover, you can click on that website for San Diego Unified and students and parents can fill out the application to be a part of the Hoover community once they graduate from eighth grade. So this does conclude my presentation for today. I'm not sure if 
there's any questions, um, if there's anything that you would like for me to clarify or anything that you would like me to turn back to in regards to the slides.